What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and today I have a little story for you about price gouging. There once was a country who everybody pretty much had everything they needed, but one day something bad happened. An epidemic broke loose across the country. Within a short amount of time, people realized that if they wore masks, it would help prevent the spread of the disease between people. Almost immediately, everybody went out to try and buy some masks for themselves. Now, in this country, in the normal economic environment, there were not produced enough masks for everybody to go out and buy them. Typically before this point, masks were reserved for healthcare workers and construction workers. Generally, there were enough to supply the daily needs of the people who were working with highly infectious people and hazardous chemicals. Now, seeing as how there was an opportunity for profit here, there were a couple of companies that said, everybody wants masks right now, so we have the opportunity to make a larger profit. Let's jack up the prices on our masks. But the good old government did not want the poor people to not be able to afford masks. And so they instituted a price control law. It said nobody is allowed to raise the price of masks. It's virtually a right at this point to be able to buy a mask at an affordable price. And so nobody is allowed to price gouge and charge excess amounts for masks. And darn, it's a good thing they did because as a result of that law, everybody was able to buy as many masks as they needed for low prices and nobody went without. Too bad we live in reality. Let's dive in. Price gouging. Price gouging is vilified. It's the stuff of profiteers and greedy businessmen, evil people who only want to profit off of disasters and desperate poor people who are in need and want only the rich to have what is necessary. In reality though, price gouging or allowing prices to go up in accordance to market demand is actually the only thing that ensures the proper supplies will get where they need to in a society. Thought experiment here. If it's just the result of greedy businessmen being greedy, why did they become greedy overnight? Why didn't they raise the prices yesterday? Well, clearly it's because they couldn't. The market forces demanded that the price be lower or else nobody would have bought the products. But market conditions in a crisis change and consumers demand more of certain products. When demand goes up and supply stays the same, the market forces will push prices higher. So it's not the businesses or the companies that change the prices, it's actually the consumers introducing extremely heightened demand. So let's say in a situation where a crisis comes in, we can use masks, we can use water bottles, we can use toilet paper, anything that's in recent memory from the coronavirus crisis, and now we're starting to experience shortages of beef and other meats, we have two responses to this. The first response is eliminating any restrictions and laws on what businesses can charge each other and businesses can charge consumers for the product. Anytime demand spikes, you are going to have the price spike in response. What is the next logical step though of a price spike? Well, number one, the people who don't really need that thing will not buy excess amounts of it. If the price changes and goes up, you as a consumer all of a sudden have to prioritize, do I really need this extra case of water even though it costs $20 when last week it just cost five? You're going to prioritize your purchases a lot more. So prices rising are going to be a hedge against Hoarding. The other thing prices rising are going to do is introduce competition because if all of a sudden there's a huge profit margin to be made, that will encourage other businesses to divert resources that they were using for, let's say, I don't know, Coca-Cola to make water instead. But if there's no massive profit opportunity there, they're not going to take the leap to spend the cost of changing over their business model, even for a temporary amount of time to produce something that's in high demand. And so a price spike is the signal to the entire economy that there is a heightened demand for something and it will spur supply to be increased as efficiently and quickly as possible. You see the toilet paper shortage wasn't because people were hoarding toilet paper. That happened at first, but everybody in the system would have had to be continually increasing their hoard for that to continue to cause 
caused the supply shortages. In reality, the toilet paper shortage was caused because toilet paper for home use and toilet paper for business or commercial use, they're actually separate products. They're all made by different companies. They're different products. They have different supply chains, different logistics. They're entirely separate systems. And so when you have 100% of the non-essential workforce in America stop going to the bathroom at work and they go home and start going to the bathroom at home, you've all of a sudden overnight tripled or quadrupled the demand in the entire country for toilet paper at home and you've removed the demand for toilet paper at work. Now, this didn't get solved for a very long time. In fact, the only reason that toilet paper started to hit the shelves again and wasn't completely sold out in most stores is because people started going back to work again. The toilet paper companies that make toilet paper for home use ramped up supply as much as they could, but there was no profit opportunity. There was no price spike that allowed a greater profit motive to allow the other companies that develop toilet paper for commercial use to spend the cut to divert their resources to home use, knowing that that was going to just be a temporary measure and they'd have to adjust back after the crisis was over. Now, the argument then goes, well, if you allow prices to spike to whatever businesses want to charge, that will ensure that only the rich get what they need and the poor people will be screwed. Are poor people more screwed when there's zero available or when there's something available at a higher cost? seems like they're probably a little bit more screwed if there's zero of something available than if there's at least something available at some cost. Now, the second response then to a shortage or a demand spike is to eliminate the ability for companies to increase prices, to put price controls in place. Now, what is that gonna do? That's going to have the exact opposite effect there won't be a signal to consumers that there is a shortage or that is there or that there is a demand spike that they should slow back on their buying and hoarding will take place. You're not going to think twice about buying more and more cases of water or more masks or than you need or more toilet paper than you need because the price is the same. You're not losing out on anything. You're going to use it eventually, right? And so the price is staying the same signal to consumers. Just take whatever you need. When that happens, that leads to real shortages because the buying doesn't stop. The demand surges, but the supply stays the same because there's no increase in price to drive supply up. And so since the supply stays the same, the price stays the same, demand surges, purchasing soaks up the entire supply. Conversely, when you allow prices to rise, it smooths out the prices again because as soon as the supply spikes, because of all of the new companies rushing in to meet the new demand for the greater profit opportunity that's there, well, now the supply has met the demand and the price can fall again. Because if the supply overshoots, now there's more than what everybody needs. And so for you to sell your product, you have to lower your price again. All right, then we have to throw a third solution in there. We put government control in there and that didn't work. So clearly the solution is more government control. How about we impose rations? If you throw rations into the mix, now you are legislating who can get something and who can't. What if there's a family, whether they're poor or rich, that needs more than the ration allows? How is the government, from a top-down centralized perspective, able to determine who needs what amount of everything more than the actual individuals themselves? They can't. The bottom line is that allowing prices to rise to whatever the market forces demand will ensure that the resources throughout the system get distributed as efficiently as possible. Because if any company tries to raise the prices too much, well, nobody's gonna buy it at that price level. But if people are still purchasing something at higher and higher prices, there's still demand for it. And let's say masks reach such an insane price that companies realize there's more profit in manufacturing masks than in other things that they're manufacturing, like clothes or other equipment. Then you have a real-time redistribution of resources that the market itself, all individual players in the market in total, have determined these resources in our system are more efficiently and more needed diverted to these purposes instead of these purposes. And finally, allowing price gouging to happen and having absolutely no restrictions on what businesses can charge for anything means that shortages are actually predicted in advance. Because if you know there's a chance that there might be an epidemic at some point I'm going to store up on the supplies of something in expectation that my storage costs for this item will be made up and I'll be able to make a profit by selling these at a larger price than what I could sell them for now. And so the ability for price gouging to happen actually incentivizes a system 
to prepare for shortages, which will preemptively increase the supply of something, it will solve the issue of the demand spike before it even happens. There's a story I heard by David Henderson, and it's about a pastor who has a church, a very small congregation, and he looks out one Sunday, realizes there's only a couple dozen people there, and he starts yelling at them, and he's angry at his congregation. He says, why aren't you bigger? Why aren't there more of you? More people need to listen to me. Why aren't you guys, why aren't there more of you coming to listen to this sermon? And then somebody in the crowd says, why are you angry at us? We're the people who are here. We're precisely the people that you shouldn't be angry at right now. In the same way, when we criticize and vilify the businesses who are providing the actual products we need, especially in a crisis, regardless of what they're charging, they are precisely the ones who are providing what we need, who we should not be angry at. And one last story before we go, there is a butcher who is selling prime rib at $20 a pound. Customer comes in, says, this is absolutely outrageous. How can you charge so much? for your beef. Right across the street, your competitor is selling their prime rib for only $10 a pound. And the butcher looks at the customer and says, okay, go over across the street and buy beef from them. And the customer looks up at the butcher and says, well, they're all out. And the butcher smiles and says, yep, when I'm all out, I only charge $5 a pound. Let's not vilify the ones who are providing the services and the products that we need when we need them most and allow the opportunities for them to capitalize on it and giving them the reward for taking the risk to establish the businesses, load up on the inventory ahead of time, and the more profit opportunity that exists across the system, the more our society will have the things that it needs. And let's stop imposing artificial restrictions that cause shortages and make the entire system more fragile and everybody overall worse off. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. You guys are the best. Have a great day.